Hello and welcome to this Tales from the Hunt Hangar Guide to Aviation Museums at Bogas and Kromovo in Bulgaria. At the end of July into August this year, 2024, I went on a two week holiday in Bulgaria, staying between Sunny Beach and Nessie Bar on the Black Sea. Along with all relaxing, I plan to visit the Aviation Museums at Bogas and Krumovo, Plodiv, so a car was hired. I was not sure how to first present all this. One way is to do a commentate as I filmed. That may have had poor sound quality and me puffing with breath in the background in the heat as I yabber on. I did think about typing details over a video with appropriate music, but the music can be bloody annoying if you don't like it. I've kept the original background sound low as it's better than nothing. And being honest, another reason was my knowledge about the majority of Soviet military aircraft was not my speciality, so I wanted to find out more about them myself. I have some notes here, so as we go around I can go out some very, very basic facts. The Bagas Aviation Museum was only a 25 minute drive away from where I was staying, and the entrance is through a very small entrance and shop. And the first aircraft you come across is the Aero L29 Delphin, or Dolphin in English. The NATO name for it was Maya. This Czechoslovakian training light attack aircraft was produced from 1963 until 1974 with an impressive 3,665 aircraft bill. It was largely used by the old Eastern Bloc countries and a few others. The Dolphin is an appropriate name for this nice sleek looking aircraft. The Bulgarian Air Force had 102 delivered from 1963 until 1974. It was retired from their service in 2002. MiG-17F, and the NATO name for it was Fresco. This classic Soviet high subsonic fighter aircraft first flew in 1950, and 10,649 including Polish, Czech and Chinese variants were built. Production ended in the late 60s. Unsurprisingly, the North Korean Air Force still operates them, but half of the fleet are unserviceable and used for spares. The Bulgarian Air Force operated the 17F seen here, and that was along with the 17PFs and the 17Rs. Numbers I don't know, but is a lot going by the many scattered around in various states of condition around Bulgaria. MiG-21 PFM, and the NATO name for it was Fishbed. The countries across four continents have flown this menacing fighter jet and interceptor aircraft, and it still serves in many nations. 11,496 were produced from 1959 until 1985 in Russia, India and Czechoslovakia. It was only until I got home that I realised I'd never filmed inside the uh, cockpit this aircraft, which is a bit annoying, but uh, never mind. TU-154B2. The NATO name for it was Careless. This 180-seat airliner first flew on the 4th of October 1968 and went into service with Aeroflot in 1972. The last one of the 1,026 was built as late as 2013 and a few today are still flying as government transports. I think it's a great looking aircraft. It may be controversial but I think it's better looking than the 727. I know I have odd tastes in aircraft but it's fit for purpose and its operating environment. This Balkan aircraft brings back great memories for me, as I went on one at Bristol Airport for a look in the early 80s. I had no camera and it was the days before camera phones, and it may have even been this aircraft. The crew were really accommodating and let me have a look round, but I do also remember it dropping oil on the apron as it sat for the turnaround. It was great going on back on one of these aircraft again, and the flight deck's always impressive along with the very dated galleys and toilets and uh, cabin in general. But uh, it does contain lots of uh, memorabilia from Balkan Airlines.
I do apologize for the very fast filming, which is a bit like a puppy having a sniff round, but um, it was very, very hot on board and uh, I wanted to get it done and get off quickly also before other people arrived and uh, blocked the shots. Antonov AN-12B. The NATO name for it was Cub. This sturdy transporter went into service in 1959 and the last one was built in 1973 with 1,248 built. It's similar size to the Hercules and did the same kind of work. It was popular with both military and later cargo operators all around the world. There's a lot of stuff to look at on the inside of this aircraft. Um, it's basically uh, a tribute to aviation in Bulgaria in some ways. Um, there's video presentation, some interesting models and uh, space stuff and the flight deck was done out like a uh, all in dark, you could hardly film in it but um, to give you the atmosphere of being in space. Um, again apologies for the filming it was really hot in there, it was mid 30s outside and uh, I wanted to get round again before a load of school kids came in and made a load of noise but um, well worth a look and uh, hopefully it'll be cooler if you do go. Antonov AN-14. He had various nicknames, the one I like is the Ukrainian one called Little B. NATO called it the Clod. Talking of NATO names, I'll go into more detail with that now. NATO used a system of code names called reporting names to denote military aircraft and other equipment used by post-Soviet states, former Warsaw Pact countries, China and other countries. The system assists military communications of alternatives to the precise proper names to save confusion over other types in the West. Of course, air forces all over the world gave their aircraft nicknames, and the Russians apparently did like the name Fulcrum for its MiG-29s. And going back to the Antonov 14, this attractive little eight passenger utility aircraft was first flown on the 15th of March 1958, and 332 were built between 1965 and 1972. And this stole utility transport hoped to replace the Antonov 2 workhorse, but it never did. Mill MI2. The NATO name for it was Hoplite. This eight passenger multi purpose helicopter was developed and designed in the early 60s, and it was solely produced by WSK. PZL Swidnik, I think that's how it's pronounced, in Poland. It first went into service in 1965. Production stopped in 1998 with 5,497 being made and it still remains in service globally. Kamov KA-26. 
and the native name for it was Hoodlum. This radical looking multi-purpose light helicopter entered production in 1969. A removable pod cabin was available for different roles like medivac or crop dusting and it could be flown without it. 816 were built until 1985. Antonov AN2R, and the NATO name for it was Colt. This absolute classic utility aircraft was designed for its durability, high lifting power, and ability to take off and land for poor runways have given it a long service life. The inside of this aircraft also has lots of things you can look at as you go round. Just look at that flight deck. The Antonov 2 must have one of the best flight decks in any airliner ever really, with fantastic visibility and what a great place to work in. No doubt in reality it's really cold when it's cold and really hot when it's hot, but still, what a great place. And this example seems to be in really good condition inside and out. The Antonov 2 has been used for many roles and can be used anywhere. A typical common passenger load was 12 or anything you can fit in it or on it. It first flew in 1947 and a record of 18,000 were built up to 2001 and still remains in service with military and civil operators all around the world. I noticed this one has metal covered wings where normally they can be fabric. Interestingly there's a modern version called the Partizan which has got a turboprop engine and is made using composite materials and generally updated throughout and it was being test flown in Russia but um, with things going on these days who knows. Antonov AN24B and the NATO name for it was Coke. And finally for Bagast, the Illusion IL14P. I forgot to take a film or photo of this aircraft and that was due to me getting to the museum and on the way out trying to find the blooming car park pay machine. The IL14 is away from the museum on a roundabout near the terminal and I will go into the IL-14 more in the next segment, but this one here seems to be in really good condition. Here is an extra one thrown in. On the main road to Bagas, in and out of Sunny Beach and Nessie Bar, is this beautifully kept MiG-21 that is a tribute to all the crews that flew them.
The Aviation Museum at Cromovo Plodiv was a two hour 50 minute drive from our hotel, but well worth it. Here is some excellent drone footage of the museum taken a couple of years ago by Alexander Botarov, and a link for the two minute video is in the description of this episode. MiG-23BN and the NATO name for it was Flogger. Production of this fighter aircraft started in 1969 and reached large numbers with 5047 aircraft being built making it the most produced variable sweep wing aircraft in history. Production ended in 1985 and a total of 90 mig 23 served with the Bulgarian Air Force from 1976 to their withdrawal from service in 2004. And as we finish with this mix shot of the roundels, here is a basic guide to the Bulgarian's Air Force history of roundels, as a lot of the variants are in the following video. MiG 17 PF, one of the few here, and some of the others here are not in such good condition, and you will see why later. Sukhoi Su 22M4, and the NATO name was Fitter. It is a variable sweep wing fighter bomber, and it was the first aircraft of this type to enter Soviet service. And the Bulgarian Air Force operated 23 Su 22s. And another nice MiG 23BN. Tupolev 2T, and the NATO name for this aircraft was. The Bat. This is one of my favourite aircraft at this museum. It was a high speed daylight and frontline bomber and dive bomber used during the Second World War. The Tu 2 could achieve similar speeds to that of a single seat fighter. It was also produced for torpedo, interceptor, and reconnaissance versions. 2,257 were produced from 1941 until 1948. China's People Liberation Army Air Force. Last 30 Tu-2s were retired as late as 1982. The Tu-2 was an effective aircraft and it played a key role in the final offensive of the Red Army. And at the back you can see Asen Jordanov's aeroplane replica and this was made in tribute to the founder of aviation engineering in Bulgaria. MIL MI-8T and the NATO name for it was the HIP. This multi-role twin turbine helicopter was mostly used for transport but is also used in an airborne command post, armed gunship and a reconnaissance platform. It first went into service in 1967 and is still in production today with over 17,000 built so far. It holds the most produced helicopter record. And here's another MiG-23 and this time it's the MLD variant. PLZ-101A Goron, and that's Rook in English. It's an agricultural and utility aircraft designed and built by WSK, and that's later PZL in Poland. And here is another example of an Antonov 14 that I covered earlier in this episode. MIL MI-24D and the NATO name for it was the HIND. This gunship attack helicopter also had room for 8 passengers and this mean looking machine is currently used by over 50 countries. Many variants have been produced. The first one flew in 1969 with over 1,600 delivered so far. MIL MI-14T and its NATO name was the Hayes. It is a nuclear capable amphibious anti-submarine helicopter. And this one here is a Bulgarian Navy example. 273 were produced from 1969 until 1986, and some are still in service today. Yak 11, and NATO called it the Moose. 
It was used by many nations that were Soviet influenced up to the early 60s. A total of 4,566 were built and the Bulgarian Air Force operated 30 in the mid 50s. Around 100 are still being flown today by Warbird and private operators including modified air race inversions. And now follows a nice brace, I suppose you could call it that, of MiG-17s and MiG-21s that I've touched on before. Arado 196A5 and this is another one of my favourite aircraft in this collection and it's a shame it's not inside getting more protection. The 196 was a German shipboard reconnaissance aircraft. It was the standard observation float plane of the German Navy throughout the Second World War. It was the only German seaplane to serve throughout the conflict. Along with the Bulgarian Air Force aircraft seen here, it also served most of the Soviets and a few other countries in small numbers. A total of 514 were produced from 1938 to 1944. Four survive today, but sadly none are airworthy. MiG-19, and NATO called it the Farmer, a Soviet second-generation single-seat fighter aircraft. It was the first Soviet production aircraft capable of supersonic speeds in level flight. Produced from 1957 till 1968, Ilushin IL-28R, and the NATO name for it was the Beagle. An early jet bomber of the post-war period, it was also licensed built in China as the Harbin H-5. The total production in the USSR was 6,316 aircraft and over 319 H-5s were built and some are still flying with North Korea. Yak-23 and NATO called it the Flora. It was developed from the Yak-17 in the late 1940s and used a re-reversed engineered copy of the British engine, the Rolls-Royce Derwent 5. It was not built in large numbers as it was inferior to the performance of the Swetwing MiG-15. Many Yak-23s were exported to the Warsaw Pact nations and remained up in service until the 1960s. The Bulgarian Air Force operated 100 aircraft, Lisanov Li-27, and NATO called it the CAB. It was a license-built Soviet version of the trailblazing DC-3. It was originally called the PS-84. It was different, however. A slightly shorter wing, the passenger door was moved from right or starboard side of the fuselage with the top opening cargo door on the left or port side in place of the original door. Other differences were the metals they used and the landing gear wheels and tyres were also quite different from the original design. A total of 4,937 were produced of all versions of the Li-27. Elution IL-2M3 The NATO name for it was Bark. The Soviets nicknamed it the Hunchback the Flying Tank or the Flying Infantry Man. This ground attack aircraft was produced in large numbers by the Soviet Union during the Second World War. The IL-2 was the most produced military aircraft in history, with 36,183 were produced from 1941 until 1945, and the Bulgarian Air Force retired theirs in 1954. And the museum features this building which has got loads of stuff on the history of Bulgarian aviation and the Air Force. And um, there's lots of things to look at. But I was more interested outside actually, to be honest, looking at the aircraft. But um, yeah, some great stuff in here.
And the most amazing thing in the museum is the uh, capsule from Soyuz 33 that um, actually was in space, which is a pretty cool bit of um, stuff to have in a museum. And then going outside, there's some really nice um, old Bulgarian transport military trucks. And all I could think of was, what a great camper van conversion. Then after the trucks is a selection of scrapped aircraft and uh, all I could think of, I wonder how much they would cost. It would be great to bring back one to the UK, but uh, that's just fantasy thinking. And while I was looking at this missile, luckily there was a couple of departures. Canada CF-104 Starfighter based on the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter and it was built under license. 200 were built. The Turkish Air Force used them up to 1995 and this is one of their examples you can see here. Yakolev Yak-40 and NATO called them the Codling. A nice looking aircraft I think. Over a thousand were produced from 1967 until 1981 and a handful are still in service today. This 32-seater passenger jet was designed to operate safely and reliably out of poorly equipped airports with short, less than 700 meter or 2,300 foot unpaved runways in poor weather. A twin-engine Yak-40 was tested with two TFE 731 engines and generally westernized and upgraded, but sadly this development never went any further. LET L410 TurboLET It's still popular today and in production as the evolved aircraft industries L41NG. And here is another example of the Antonov AN24B that I've covered before. I1 SL90, also called the Leshy, is a Russian-Bulgarian two-seater utility aircraft. Illusion IL-14 and its NATO name was Crate, a bit unfortunate. This commercial and military transport and cargo aircraft first flew in 1950 and entered service in 1954. The IR-14 was also manufactured in East Germany and in Czechoslovakia and a total of 1,345 were built from 1956 until 1960. The Bulgarian Air Force had 20 delivered from 1960, including the IL-14M and East German-built IL-14P examples. The IL-14P was retired by 1974, and only four IL-14Ms remained by 1979, and local airlines TA, BSO and Balkan Bulgarian also operated them. It is a shame the rudder's missing from this aircraft, but I like the way the paint's gone, I think it looks really good, even though it looks a bit rough.
Thanks a lot for watching. Please like, share or subscribe. Do drop in a comment if you wish. And uh, for now, thank you and goodbye.